Shortly after the end of World War II, the Soviet Union obtained the B-29 strategic bomber through unexpected means, and successfully replicated it to create the Tu-4 bomber. A total of over 800 Tu-4 bombers were produced, making it one of the Soviet Union's strategic aerial deterrents at the time. However, the range of this propeller-driven bomber was unable to meet the needs of the Soviet military. As a result, the Soviet Union attempted to develop a long-range bomber version based on the Tu-4, which led to the creation of the Tu-80 and Tu-85. The first extended-range version was the Tu-80, whose design work began in the spring of 1948. Soviet designers achieved the increased range by installing more fuel-efficient engines, enlarging the fuel tanks, and optimizing the aerodynamic shape. The design aimed to extend the bomber's range to 700 to 800 kilometers and increase the maximum payload to 12,000 kilograms, a significant improvement over the Tu-4's range of 5,400 kilometers. The Tu-4 was powered by four Shvetsov Ash 73 TK 18-cylinder radial air-cooled engines, each producing 2,400 horsepower. The Tu-80, on the other hand, was equipped with an upgraded version of this engine, the Shvetsov Ash 73 TKFN, developed in 1949 with the addition of fuel injection devices, increasing the power output to 2,800 horsepower and effectively improving fuel efficiency. The aircraft's fuselage underwent significant changes, as the Tu-4 retained the B-29's blunt circular nose, while the Tu-80 was redesigned with a more pointed shape and extended fuselage of nearly 4 meters. The cockpit and nose of the aircraft formed a stepped configuration, and the engine compartment was also redesigned to reduce the cross-sectional area and flight resistance. The wing position was slightly raised, and a lighter wing box was adopted. The larger fuselage meant more space, not only extending the bomb bay but also accommodating more fuel. Despite the improvements, the Soviet Union only built one Tu-80, and its increased range still did not meet the requirements for strategic bombing. As a result, the only Tu-80 became an experimental aircraft and was later used as a target. The Tu-85 project began a few months after the Tu-80, and both projects were carried out concurrently, with no direct succession between them. The Tu-85 had a similar appearance to the Tu-80. The Tu-85 was powered by VD-4K turbocharged 24-cylinder liquid-cooled engines, with a single output of 3,160 horsepower and a supercharged output of up to 4,300 horsepower, providing greater power compared to the Tu-80's engines. The engine drove larger four-blade propellers, allowing the aircraft to achieve a maximum speed of 665 km per hour surpassing the Tu-80's 545 km per hour. The aircraft had a higher aspect ratio wing, with a wing area of 273.6 square meters compared to the Tu-80's 173.1 square meters, providing additional internal fuel capacity. The total fuel carried by the aircraft reached 63,600 liters, distributed among up to 48 fuel tanks, and the maximum endurance reached 26 hours, with an estimated maximum range of 12,000 kilometers. The Tu-85 had an eight-person crew, with pressurized compartments due to the extended flight time. Two crews would share the mission due to the long endurance, and the aircraft provided rest space for the standby crew. Consideration was also given to the crew's needs during flight, such as meals and restrooms. The bomb bay of the bomber was enlarged to accommodate the FAB-9000 bomb with a payload of 9000 kg. The aircraft had a total of five gun turrets, located on the dorsal, sides, and tail of the aircraft. In fact, the tail turret only housed a radar, while the other four turrets each contained two 23mm NR-23 machine guns, which were remotely operated. The Soviet Union completed two prototypes in 1950 and 1951, with the first prototype demonstrating impressive performance during testing. It flew 9,020 kilometers with a payload of 5,000 kilograms, and upon landing, it still had enough fuel remaining for an additional 3,000 kilometers, demonstrating the potential to reach the designed range of 12,000 kilometers. 
The Soviet Union had originally planned to mass-produce the Tu-85 in 1951, but the production plan was soon cancelled. At that time, the jet-powered MiG-15 fighter demonstrated absolute superiority over the propeller-driven B-29 in the Korean War, leading the Soviet Union to abandon piston-powered aircraft and shift support to the Tu-95 turboprop-powered bomber. 